As a symbol of speed, the maneuverability and off-road capability of military vehicles have become key equipment for improving the efficiency of warfare since the birth of military vehicles. There is such a saying in the military field that a good military vehicle is no less than any good medium-sized tank. The new generation of warrior assault vehicle is a military off-road vehicle independently developed by China. Compared with previous generations of warriors, the size and dominance of armored vehicles have evolved. The larger body size can carry at least one squad force at a time. A thicker protective steel plate can dare to face the enemy's automatic weapon attack in small-scale conflicts. It is with stronger power and faster driving on rough roads with full bulletproof. With smarter and AI information systems, it can communicate with each other more effectively and reliably. It is a Highland Iron Cavalry that can carry out rapid military tasks on the battlefield for force projection and quickly assault missions. The Warrior is a flexible and powerful combat platform. Its vehicle-mounted weapon station can be equipped with ordinary rifles and heavy machine guns. According to different combat tasks, a variety of weapons can be quickly replaced and installed in a few minutes. It is a veritable multi-purpose general-purpose combat platform. The weapon system is mounted on the roof, but the weapon console is hidden inside the car. This is the remote weapon station of the Warrior. The heavy firepower weapon system equipped by the Warrior can be carried by infantrymen. Therefore, the operation is more convenient. The vehicle-mounted weapon has achieved almost 360-degree fire coverage. Combatants can fire inside of the vehicle. There are secrets to the precise shooting of warriors. It is well known that the continuous firing of heavy fire equipment on land caused the muzzle to jump up due to the recoil and the impact point was unstable. This causes a linear trajectory from bottom to top. The warrior's multipurpose weapon rack is made of special materials and exquisite structure design. When the grenade launcher or heavy machine gun fires continuously, most of the recoil is cancelled or suppressed and the impact point is a fixed point actually and very stable. The shooting accuracy is therefore greatly improved. The combat effectiveness of the vehicle groups will naturally increase significantly. This newly designed headlight and an air defense device can make it difficult for the enemy to find from above and judge the position of the vehicle by the car lights when driving at night. The tires are specially designed. If any two of the tires are damaged, the vehicle can still travel dozens of kilometers. Its powertrain has been tested and proved to be extremely effective and reliable in all weather conditions. The third generation of Dongfeng Warriors changed the game completely. It is full bulletproof, full waterproof, and all weatherproof. They have been deployed to Tibet border forces. We now take a look at how these vehicles had been tested before certification and delivery to PLA. We also visited the Dongfeng manufacturer to see how these special vehicles are made. Now 
防止因沙尘进入导致车辆激火，大大提高了猛士在战场上的环境适应能力。同时，猛士引擎舱各部件均采用超强防水标准，更不惧水中长时间行驶。无论如何呢？大家看，我刚刚分别擦拭了猛士那，大家往下看，我现在站在这个坡的顶端，基本上是没有办法再往。一路运而生，高强度防护装甲板作为钣金结构件，直接用作车身结构。那从一代到三代，性能全面换代升级。更重要的是啊，它突破了这个传统的经济元件。我们就来去看一下，这里就是环境风洞的中控间了。环境风洞设备当中由他们负责来记录。那么今天我们要在这里模拟一场极寒的降雪天气，来检验猛士在恶劣环境条件下各设备的工作性能。以及能否为人员提供基本的舒适保障？大家看，整个环境风洞已经被……现在雪基本上已经达到了三十公分的厚度。这辆车已经在这里冻了好几个小时了，真的是冻的已经是瑟瑟发抖了。让我们上车，赶紧去取取暖。好了，师傅，我们现在可以正常启动了。师傅现在已经正常启动了，然后把暖风打开了，我们可以看到现在猛士在这种极寒的天气下，它的各个设备运转正常。那么随着这个暖风的打开，我们室内温度也是迅速提升，可以看到现在温度显示器上显示的温度已经达到了二十多度，相比较室外的寒冷。身旁摆放着已经初步切割完成后大大小小不同的特种钢材，稍后工人师傅们就要对这些特种钢材进行焊接处理，最终焊接拼接成猛士车的车前板机，也就是车头的部分。现在工人师傅们正在利用工装夹具对车前板机上的每一个零部件进行精准的定位，主要是通过定位销和限位块来找到焊接的基准，如果定位不准，后期就无法拼装。定位完成之后，我们的工人师傅就要对他们进行下一步的加固处理，也就是焊接。在准备就绪，工人师傅们手拿焊枪和面罩，正在对车前板机的内部进行焊接。可以看到，他的手法非常的快，现场也已经是火光四溅。在完成了车前板机的内部焊接之后，工人师傅们还要对车前板机的外部进行焊接。经过工序分解，整个流程大概需要一个多小时的时间。最终呈现在大家眼前的就是猛士车的车头部分了。看似简单的焊接工艺，其实也面临着巨大的焊接难题。焊接变形一直是制造环节大难题。由于热胀冷缩，特种钢材会产生细微的形状和尺寸变化，甚至导致零件报废。经过长时间摸索，军工人运用反变形控制手段，保证了零件高精度要求。在车前板金焊接完成之后，还要经过侧围、地板、后围、井盖等分整层焊接，最后在总拼焊接装配线上完成整个车身的打造。这里就是总拼焊接柔性装配线了。大家看，经过分整层焊接和平显定之后，我们的车身外形已经在这条生产线上了。紧接着，焊接机器人要对整个车身外形上的焊缝进行满焊，形成车身总条。满焊完成之后，我们的车身将会被输送到我身后这个巨大的翻转棚里。在这里，它将进行一百八十度的翻转，完成对车体底部的焊接。现在，我们看翻转龙已经开始翻转了。这是一条自主研发和制造、拥有多项专利和专有技术、防弹板无焊拼装生产线，具备多品种、快速切换和混流通过能力。走下总拼焊接柔性装配线的车身雏形，还需要经过打磨、涂装等一系列工序后
。猛士车非常结实硬朗的外骨骼就已经打造完成了，接下来它将进入这条总装装配线，在这里完成对车顶内饰以及底盘的安装。大家看，生产线上工人师傅们正在紧张忙碌的对一辆一辆车进行严格仔细的安装工作。头顶的上方，装配完成后的车身已经准备就绪。一键启动后，它将在传输带的作用下与底盘进行自动的连接。连接完成之后，经过调试，一辆崭新的第三代猛士轻型高机动越野车就生产下线了。刚刚问世的猛士还要经过四轮定位、淋雨检测、检测线调试、路试、中检，一路过关斩将，通过全过程监控和专项检验，合格后才能列装部队。东风猛士作为战场上的钢驹铁马，已经成为人民军队强大战斗力的重要本，将取决于未来战争的这个发展方向。对于猛士而言，将进一步的提升水平，增加对现代化战争的需求。从第一代猛士生产下线到第三代猛士驰骋沙场，东风猛士历经十四年的迭代发展，形成了以轻骑指挥、运兵突击、火力打击等多用途、系列化、通用性的高技术战术平台。无论是边塞戍边，东风人将始终以创新研发之理念、大国工匠之技艺，打造更多、更新、更强的国之利器。This platform has been adopted for many other vehicle applications, as you can see in the following clip. The anti-terrorist assault vehicles are China-developed new generation equipment that possess all-weather fighting capability in a complicated battlefield environment. The armored anti-riot vehicles are mainly used to crack down on terrorism and violence. The two types of fighting vehicles are important equipment of the PAP in dealing with emergencies and fighting riots. However, due to its capability and special features, this type of vehicles with enhancements are also deployed to PLA border force. A batch of Type 08 wheeled infantry fighting vehicles was delivered to a brigade of the 75th Army. The officers and soldiers solemnly declared at the handover ceremony. It has realized a policy change from the old form of tanks to the new digital theory. The Type 08 wheeled infantry fighting vehicle weighs 21 tons and is 8 meters long, 3 meters wide and 3 meters high. The 8x8 chassis is equipped with a 30mm vehicle-mounted automatic cannon. It can also cross rivers through water propellers, with good mobility and strong firepower. As one of the main equipment of the Army's Rapid Response Force, the vehicle has all-weather combat capabilities that can be used for rapid deployment, in a case such as border dispute in which it can quickly control and hold in important positions. Under the coordination of multiple arms, it can effectively face multiple threats and perform diversified military tasks. The first combat shooting assessment began, and the reference vehicle group drove to the designated area. It adopts the way of moving monitor or rotating screen design to quickly find the capture target, automatically calculate and set the final parameters to lock by itself. 
choose the shell type automatically, control the shooting timing, and implement optimal firepower strikes on targets in accordance with different natures in the target station. A unit of the military region that is training in the snow-covered plateau at an altitude of more than 4,500 meters recently ushered in a batch of new equipment handover ceremony held on the plateau garrison. The new wheeled armored assault vehicle can be used in various complex areas such as plateaus, deserts, ice and snow, and has all-weather combat capabilities. After the installation ceremony, the officers and men quickly rushed to combat preparations, driving new wheeled armored assault vehicles to an open tactical training in the plateau environment. New ZBD-04A infantry fighting vehicles are also deployed. It has a crew of three that are a commander, a driver, and a gunner, and is able to carry seven troops. The vehicle has amphibious capability, designed to swim to shore from a ship. For high-speed swimming, it has two large water jet ports. The main armament is a two-plane stabilized, semi-automatic 100mm rifled gun, capable of firing both HEFRAG rounds and the 3 UBK-10 ATGM effective range of round is estimated to be 4,000 meters, with a rate of fire of 10 rounds per minute. The 3 UBK-10 ATGM consists of a laser beam riding missile and a container case. As well as engaging armored vehicles and fortifications, the missile could also engage low-flying helicopters. The missile has a maximum range of 4,000 meters, and can penetrate 600 millimeters of armor. The system carries eight missiles inside the turret. It also has a coaxial 30 mm automatic cannon, with 500 rounds. The cannon can fire both armor-piercing and HEFRAG rounds. Rate of fire is 300 rounds per minute and range is 1,500 to 2,000 meters. It also has a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun located to the left of the main gun. It can also be equipped with four HJ-8 wire-guided anti-tank missiles on both sides of the turret. There is a three-barrel smoke grenade launcher mounted on either side of the turret. The vehicle is fitted with an indigenous-made laser warning and countermeasure system. While ballistic protection is likely that the vehicle has all-round protection against 14.5mm rounds and resistance against 20-25mm shells over the frontal arc, fire control system includes a ballistic computer, an electro-mechanical gun stabilizer, and a laser rangefinder. The driver's hatch mounts three periscopes, the commander has been upgraded to an independent thermal sight that can rotate 360 degrees. A new wheeled anti-aircraft guns independently developed by China are equipped with advanced radar and fire control systems, which cooperates as an independent combat unit. It can be called a king of anti-aircraft artillery. As a revolver-style anti-aircraft gun, the wheeled 35mm anti-aircraft gun has strong maneuverability and the advantages of accompanying mechanized troops in air defense operations. It is definitely an effective air defense weapon of the medium-sized combat brigade. We put the three tasks that are target search, tracking and firing in one vehicle. We can be firing, searching, and tracking at the same time in the course of moving. It is more suitable for a combat field with need of air defense. Different from towing, the dual-barrel design of the vehicle-mounted 35mm anti-aircraft gun is a single-barreled gun in the center of the wheeled anti-aircraft gun. But it does not mean that combat effectiveness is reduced, because of its use of a brand new revolving automation. This doubles the rate of fire of the single tube, and the firepower density is no less than that of the double tube anti-aircraft gun. The structure of the rolling is somewhat similar to a revolver. This way of supplying shells can effectively improve the accuracy and reliability of strikes. However, the revolving automaton has high requirements for the accuracy of the positioning of the cartridge, the material of the barrel, and the scattering design. A country without strong industrial technology may not be able to build. After the continuous upgrade and research and development, the 35mm anti-aircraft gun still occupies an unshakable position as the last air defense line. China also deployed its best mobile surface-to-air missile defense vehicles to the Tibet. The HQ-17 is an all-weather low-to-medium altitude, short-range surface-to-air missile system developed by China for the People's Liberation Army. The HQ-17 incorporates an indigenous all-terrain tracked launch vehicle, a new advanced identification friend or foe short for IFF antenna on top of the search radar. The HQ-17 incorporates an indigenous all-terrain tracked launch vehicle, a new advanced identification friend or foe short for IFF antenna on top of the search radar, 
an electronically scanned array radar for better performance against jamming, and the ability to data link with other systems. It is designed to keep up with mechanized troops like tank battalions to provide air cover on the move, as well as protect military sites. The tracked launch vehicle is produced by China in Inner Mongolia. The vehicle weighs around 32 tons, and is about 8 meters long, 3.2 meters tall and 4 meters wide. It is powered by a roughly 1,000 house power diesel engine and has a maximum speed of 65 km per hour and range of 600 km. It is manned by a crew of three. A lighter version of wheeled based also deployed. The wheeled launch vehicle is produced by Dongfeng Motor Corporation and is a 6x6 chassis. The vehicle weighs around 30 tons, and is about 9.7 meters long, 3.1 meters tall and 3.7 meters wide. This wheeled version is also exported to other countries. China just announced an export version of its air defense missile system called HQ-17AE, which is based on the latest HQ-17 system. This is an all-weather low to medium altitude, short-range surface-to-air missile system developed by China for the People's Liberation Army. In case of a war, China can quickly deploy such system in a massive numbers to form the world's most effective air defense in a battlefield. The HQ-17 has integrated with all Chinese's short and mid-ranged missile systems. Its max moving speed at 90 miles per hour, and it can intercept an incoming missile while moving at high speed. The powerful advanced radar can detect any incoming aircraft before a pilot can see it from his onboard radar of a plane. The HQ-17 is unstoppable from air. This short clip video shows they were training and testing the system. All the equipments are compacted in this sized vehicle, that can be deployed quickly anywhere in any time, moving along with motorized ground troops and army tank units. There is a fully rotational air search radar, which can search and find air targets on a large scale in all directions, and then further to identify and confirm the discovered targets. There is a front radar that performs precise tracking and locking of the targets while issuing commands to the missiles which are guided to shoot down the targets. It carries total eight missiles and can simultaneously fire four missiles at four different locked targets. The special missile loading truck that is equipped with special machine and tools will load the missiles into the HQ-17A vehicle. It is almost fully automatic with minimum manual procedure, and only takes a few minutes to load two packs of missiles. Each pack contains four missiles. Large number of missile packs supply can be carried by trucks, which will move along with the HQ-17A so there will be no missile shortage in the battlefields. The solid-phased array radar system is not only light and compact, but also has strong ability to find targets and shoot down four targets simultaneously at any time. 
If target is type of fixed wing aircraft, the HQ 17A can shoot down targets at 20 km distance. Take a close look at how the missile flies. The missile is ejected vertically into the air. You see a small flame on the head of the missile first. That is a small engine under the head of the missile ignited to adjust the missile to point it to the target. The canard-shaped missile has the rudder at the front and the wings at the back, vertical launching. Because the target can be flying at very low altitude, the missile must have a fast turning mechanism aiming at the target. The second generation of air defense system HQ-7 was born by this need. The HQ-7 has a leapfrog advanced in comparison to the HQ-2. It was developed in 80s and 90s consists of large amount of advanced electronic devices that used very large scale integrated circuits. The system is specially designed to be able to shoot down fast incoming targets flying at ultra low altitude. Not only just missile itself improved considerably, we had to face a variety of technology challenge on radar, infrared, optics, and laser, etc. to encounter the difficulty of tracking, locking up, and shooting down an ultra low altitude moving target. Aerial targets encountered in the battlefield conditions are often unpredictable, sudden change, faster, and more threatening. To shoot down such targets, the first and foremost thing is to improve the missile's guidance accuracy in all aspects. The development team identified four key stages of missile strikes against air targets, and made breakthroughs in key technologies at each stage. In the fist stage, which is initial guidance, you have to use infrared, or optical etc. sensors control the direction of the missile. In the second stage, which is middle guidance, we used our ground radar to guide the missile head. In the third stage, which is last guidance, the central system inside missile head aim the missile and control projectile motion towards the target. The last stage is a key to shoot down the target, there are fuse, warhead, etc. inside the missile head. So the four stages are the key in developing air missile defense system. The second generation, HQ-7, can shoot down low altitude targets. It took years to develop such system. The difficulty was to have such high speed flying test targets at low altitude, which ranged from dozen meters to 100 meters from ground. It took years to develop test targets that can fly in various of speeds and changes of directions and altitude. This is an old video to show a HQ-7 field testing. That trial was 100% successful. You see last 5 shots, 100% success. We let the targets move in different directions and quick turns, but our missile captured them and shot them down. They just could not escape as you see. Since then, the HQ-7 became the backbone of China's low-altitude air defense. As a product of new generation of China's air defense missiles, the HQ-17A inherited and carried forward the HQ-7's low altitude and flexibility and at the same time achieved a new leap in the technology level. The first generation HQ-2 was mainly used to defense against high altitude aircraft. The second generation HQ-7 was mainly used to defense against aircraft target at low or middle altitude. The third generation HQ 17 AE can intercept incoming cruise missiles and air to ground missiles. Each vehicle can launch four missiles simultaneously to intercept four different targets. The second generation HQ 7 can only fire single missile at a time. In terms of combat capability, the HQ 17 AE equivalent to five of HQ 7. Also, the HQ 17 AE can fire missiles while moving. This is very challenge, because vehicle can bounce up down and sway around. So the missile must be launched vertically and command guidance in the air.
China's air defense missile systems have gone from following the advanced countries to catching up with the advanced countries. I can say that the overall level of our missiles technologies are at top level in the world. Some of technologies we used have already taken the lead and surpass other countries' advanced system. In addition to the separated and inflatable barracks we have seen in the past, recently, from the plains to the plateau, from the training grounds to the border posts, various new barracks have appeared frequently. For example, a composite brigade of the 82nd Army is conducting a pilot project of disassembled and assembled barracks. Now what we see on the screen is the field folding barracks built by officers and soldiers when they are stationed in the field. Its disassembly and assembly are very good and easy. Several soldiers can complete the assembly in 15 minutes. The four-story building in this barracks is built with container modules, which can meet the needs of the troops to change houses frequently. The frontline frontier defense troops at an altitude of more than 5,000 meters also have a new type of detachable, intelligent and functional insulation barracks. New style barracks can be easily put together, and flexibly adopt energy-saving buildings and photovoltaic power generation technology. For example, the indoor temperature can still be higher than 15 degrees Celsius when the outdoor temperature is minus 40 degrees. In addition, there are sunshine solar panels installed on the roof on the plateau at an altitude of 5,400 meters, with a recreational and sports room, bathroom, and biodegradable toilet. These new style barracks are getting closer to the actual combat troops' needs. They live more and more comfortably. The continuous improvement of various supporting facilities has also provided the troops with stronger combat effectiveness. With the intensive deployment of the entire army's actual combat training tasks, higher requirements have been placed on mobility support. Recently, a batch of new style field barracks appeared on the training ground. In view of the long rainy season and the high precipitation in the training area, a medical team of the Joint Logistics Support Center introduced a new type of camping support and support system. The resource guarantee system includes container storage, field hospital modules, and detachment office modules. The standardized modular design concept is adopted to modular storage and transportation processes, and integrated lifting and portable mounting, etc. operations. Today, the inflatable camping resource protection system is being tested on a plateau near 5,000 meters above sea level. The resource guarantee system adopts a wall-shaped arch structure including 11 modules such as for command, maintenance, accommodation, bathroom, dining, etc., and has the effect of concealment. Oh!